Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back to an episode of Emmy Eats. I haven't done one of these videos in a long time. If you've missed the series where I eat food from a particular area, particular country, particular state, check out the playlist. I have a lot of videos. I've eaten a lot of places. I even have an, a map that shows you all the places that I've eaten. But this is all thanks to you, beautiful lovelies, who send me these treats from your particular area. Thank you so very much and big thanks to Aaron for making this video possible. Now Aaron overnighted me a huge box of goodies from Louisiana, particularly very specifically Lafayette, Louisiana, which is in the southern part of Louisiana. And the stuff she sent is absolutely amazing. So many things, in fact, I'm going to have to do three different episodes. Let me just start off with this, this frozen brick. This came packed in dry ice. Oh my gosh, Erin, look at this. Okay, so it looks like a block of pink, right? But if you look carefully, the label says Louisiana alligator meat. This is a brick of alligator meat, five pounds of it. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna do a whole entire episode just dedicated to preparing alligator meat. I have never had it before. I think the most traditional way to eat it is deep fried in little nuggets. So another thing I'm gonna to have to say for another episode is this. And this is cleaned crawfish tails. So what I'm gonna make with this is the classic etouffee, which is a kind of smothered gravy. So the food that Aaron sent me represents Cajun cuisine, which made me think, what is the difference between Cajun and Creole? So I fell down the internet rabbit hole and discovered there are a few different things. Generally speaking, Creole represents more of kind of the city type food, more food that you would find in New Orleans, food that's based near the port where there is more variety found in terms of produce and ingredients, including things like tomatoes. So a lot of the recipes you will find tomatoes. So Cajun food on the other hand is considered a little bit more country. It's a little bit farther inland and not as accessible to ingredients like tomatoes and refrigeration. We're talking historically. So there wasn't access to things like refrigeration because you weren't in the city. So for example, when you make a roux, which is a fat mixed with flour into a thick paste that is toasted, brings lots of flavor to a dish. In Cajun cuisine, that would be typically made with oil as opposed to in Creole cuisine, it would be made with butter because butter requires refrigeration. So all of these very, very interesting historical nuances, all because of food. I love that so much. I love that food brings us together and it allows me and you to understand another person's culture based on something we all do, which is eat. So let's go ahead and get started eating. So thanks again, Erin, for sending me all of these beautiful goodies. I can't wait to tuck into this. Speaking of which, this is something that I've been wanting to try for a long time, and is this. And this is a package of boudin. And boudin is a sausage made with pork and rice. Generally speaking, there are two different types, boudin blanc and boudin noir. And the examples that Erin sent me are all boudin Blanc. In general, if you say boudin, I think people think of boudin blanc, which is this lighter version. Boudin noir, on the other hand, contains pork's blood, so it has a much darker color, and I'm sure a really earthy, delicious flavor. So this one, Erin says, is her favorite. It's Camo's. She also sent this one, and this is Savoise, and this one is a little bit different in color, but still the white variety. This one, and this was done by Cajun Original Foods. And this is a hot version, excited to taste that one. She also sent the regular of that brand as well. Lastly, she sent me this one, which is Foreman's Original Boudin. Now, boudin can be prepared a few different ways. You can steam it, you can poach it, you can grill it, you can even bake it. On the directions on all these packages says to poach it in a bit of seasoned water for about 10 to 15 minutes until the internal temperature reaches 160 degrees. So that's what I'm going to do. Yay! I made five different little flags, and while these are cooking, I'm gonna skewer them so I can identify them. So while I'm taking all these sausages out, let me tell you a little bit more about Cajun culture. So apparently, Acadians that came all the way up from Canada came down to Louisiana to flee the British invasion and that little population became Cajuns. Acadians! Cajun! That's where the word comes from. Never knew. Never knew at all. So when they came down they established four different regions, the levees and bayous, the prairies, which is where Lafayette is located, the swamplands, and the coastal marshes. So interesting, right? Okay, so this one is the hot. 
So boudin contains pork and rice, and Aaron tells me that rice is served with practically every dish, and there's a variant called dirty rice, which includes some kind of meat and seasonings that make it look dirty, but taste delicious, I'm sure. Okay, now we're gonna poach these. Let me go wash my hands. So I've got a pot of boiling water here, and I'm supposed to season this, and Aaron included this, and this is Louisiana crawfish thyme Cajun seasoning. This concludes salt, red pepper, onion, garlic, sugar, MSG. Awesome. Liquid crab oil, and I mean that. I love MSG. And what else? And some lemon oil and paprika, and some stuff to keep it from caking. I have to give some credit to Emeril Lagasse for bringing food from Louisiana to the masses. That's where I learned about, besides his whole BAM thing, but his whole seasoning, the whole trinity, the whole smothering, the whole roux business. I learned that all from watching Emeril. So, Shout out to you, Mr. Lagasse. Okay, so, ooh, this smells great. Okay, I'm gonna put a good teaspoon of that right into my, well, I'm gonna put a couple teaspoons. Now I'm gonna lower my sausages in there, make sure my flags are on there so I can identify which is which. You see those little guys in there? They're not so little, actually. Alrighty, I'm gonna poach these on medium-low heat. I don't want it to be too heavy of a boil because I don't wanna break up the sausages and boil these for about 15 minutes. Okay, I'll be right back. So while the sausages are poaching, let's try some other things. Let's start with this. Look how cute this is! And these are creamy pecan pralines. Now, do you say pecan or do you say pecan? Do you say pralines or do you say pralines? So personally, I've always said praline and pecan for no other reason than just because that's what I've always said, but apparently it's a regional thing. If you live in the southern part of Louisiana, you're more likely to say pecan and praline. And if you live further north, closer to Georgia, you're more likely to say pecan and praline. So interesting. Aaron didn't mention anything about this, but I imagine this kind of trolley car was something that you could find in New Orleans. Oh yes, look at that! Uh-huh, 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 oh my gosh. So they look like cookies, but I think these are more like candy. And here are the pieces of pecan. That's what it looks like inside. It has a little bit of a snap to it. You know what it smells like? It smells like toffee, that combination of butter and cooked caramelly sugar. It's a lucky moss. Mmm, mmm, incredibly sweet, but full of buttery richness. It has a little crystalline texture to it. It's slightly crumbly, kind of just melts in your mouth. And then you've got the pecan flavor in there, which is nutty and has a bit of a bite to it, adds a little bit of richness, but I love the texture contrast of so that little bit of nutty crunch and the kind of melt away, dissolvable, caramelly flavor on the outside. But it's not chewy at all, it just kind of just melts away. Mmm, mmm. This is what candy corn just aspires to be. Like one day, it's like, one day, maybe I can be a pecan praline. Yeah. Sorry, no, you're just candy corn. Look at this beautiful golden box. And this is a box of cinnamon spice pecan. So these are actually made in Lafayette, Louisiana. All right, here they are. So there's the whole pecan inside, and it's coated with this cinnamon glaze. Let's give that a taste. Mmm. Mmm, boudin's ready. A delicious combination of nut, cinnamon, and spice, and a great little crunchy texture on the outside. <laughs> I think these would be absolutely amazing crumbled on top of vanilla ice cream or on top of sticky buns. If you were making some kind of cinnamon roll, if you kind of crush these up and sprinkle these on top. Yeah. Got my pot of boudin here. Now these are often served just sliced and eaten as is, and then oftentimes accompanied with this. These are pork cracklings. This is the skin of the pig that's been deep fried until they're really crispy and fluffy. Aaron says, of course, these are best eaten when they're made fresh, but this is about as close as I'm gonna get all the way up here in Rhode Island. Pull these out. On poaching, these have shrunk quite a bit, which is nice. Oh, look at this one. This one's so cute, little stubber. <laughs> Let's cut this open. These are natural pork casings, so they're completely edible. Oh, look at this. They are much actually softer textured inside than a typical sausage. 
and it must be all of that rice. So this is the kamoze. Let's give that a taste. Mmm. Oh, there's a little bit of heat in there. Mmm. That is delicious. It has a great little porky flavor to it. I can definitely taste that Cuban seasoning in there and a little bit of spice. And the rice is in there too, nice and kind of fluffy. But it's not actually like a sausage. This is almost more like Thanksgiving dressing. It has a kind of fluffiness to it. It reminds me of stuffing, kind of that bread side dish that we have with turkey. It's fluffy and that's because of the rice. And it is strongly flavored of meat and there's a little bit of a meaty bite to it. But it's not just like a kielbasa or a hot dog where it's just like a solid hunk of meat at all. And I like the fact that there's a strong kind of porkiness to it. Delicious. Now we're going to try the Cajun Original, which is this one. This one looks a little bit lighter in color, perhaps a little less paprika. Mmm. That's very different. A little saltier. And that to me has a little bit more sage. It tastes a little bit more like has poultry seasoning in it. Ooh. And it does have some spice too. A little white pepper. Maybe some mace. Ooh, that's delicious too. Now we're going to try the Cajun Original Hot. Let's see if this one looks different inside. I love that there's a little snap to the casing on the outside. Now this one looks a little bit oranger in color. Maybe that's due to the additional amount of heat in there. Mm hmm Very similar flavor to the original, just a little bit more heat, maybe a little bit more cayenne, but I like it. The amount of heat is very, very tolerable and just gives you kind of a nice little warmth on your tongue. I think I like the hot more than original, but I really like spicy things, so not surprising. Next is Savoise. This one's very cute. It's a little bit oranger in color. Kind of stubby too. That's the interior. I don't see any flecks of green, maybe no parsley in this one or less parsley. Ooh, I like that one. Almost like chicken bouillon-y flavor to it. Ooh, I like that one. This one seems a little less heavy on the seasoning. Mmm, and tastes more savory and meaty, but it still has that really light, fluffy Thanksgiving dressing texture to it. Delicious. Okay, last we're gonna try Foreman's. This one was the longest sausage. And this one has a slight kind of orange tinge to it as well. Not as gray as the others. Mmm, that one I feel like is a little bit more similar to the Camos in terms of the intensity of spice. When I say spice, I don't necessarily mean hot, spicy heat. I just mean combination of kind of herby spiced flavors. Very well seasoned. Now that I've actually had boudin, I understand why this combination of pork crackling would work. At first I'm like, why would you want sausage and then have more pork product? But because this has so much rice in it and it's so light and fluffy, it makes sense that you'd want to pair it with something crunchy and meaty. So let's put a couple of these down here. So these are much like chicharrones, which are deep fried pork skins. Let's have one plain. Delicious. Salty, porky, airy, huge crunch. Mmm. So, so good. My brother and father and I really love pork cracklins. My mom actually used to render pork fat into these little tiny little nuggets of just deep fried golden goodness. This is specifically the skin, so it gets really kind of light. So you get this kind of almost styrofoamy texture. I think I might like the Savoies the best. Mm. Now that's the way to go because the boudin is so light and fluffy and moist and tasty and then you've got this big crunch that's a little bit smoky and porky so it kind of echoes the porkiness. Oh yes. This is dangerous. Okay, dangerous. This way of delivering boudin to your system on a boat of crackling. <laughs> So good. So if you'll notice in this lineup of boudin, some of these are a little bit darker in color. And Aaron says that there's a tradition of putting 
pork liver in some of the boudin and that's not used as much and I think that's the probably the biggest difference from this style to this style of boudin. So I am a huge fan of liver and pâtés and surprisingly I would have thought that without tasting boudin that I would be generally drawn to the one that includes what I suspect has a little bit of pork liver in it. But after tasting it I think I actually prefer the lighter version perhaps maybe because I have this association to Thanksgiving dressing or turkey that those flavors seem a bit strong still delicious but I don't know maybe I just have to eat more boudin <laughs> alrighty now that we've had boudin let's have some waffles so here is a sourdough waffle that I had in my freezer I made a batch that's what I like to do with waffles I like to make a huge batch and then let them cool off and then I put in my freezer and then in the morning when my son goes to school I can just break out one of the frozen waffles put them in the toaster and voila we have a warm sourdough waffle to eat this one's a little bit wrinkled but it'll be fine now the reason why I have a waffle is I'm going to taste this and this is Steen's 100% pure cane syrup so much of the area where Aaron lives in Lafayette Louisiana it's considered prairie land was used to grow sugarcane so there's a huge sugarcane industry and Aaron says her mama or her grandmother used to put this just on bread and just eat it under a big oak tree just like that she also says this has a very strong flavor and to just use a little bit on first taste Ooh, it smells like molasses. Exactly. Okay. Ooh, but certainly not as dark as molasses. So I poured it on the plate so you could see it. And I put a little bit on my waffle. This recipe, by the way, for the sourdough waffles is the King Arthur Flour Sourdough Waffle Pancake recipe. I'll put the link down below. All right, let's give this a taste. Mmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That is good, and it does have a very strong flavor, and the flavor is of molasses. Now, have you ever had molasses before? You know that it's actually not that sweet. It just has a really strong, almost smoky, caramely flavor to it. It's an ingredient that's used in gingerbread or ginger snap cookies. It gives it that beautiful brown color and that warm, caramely flavor. And that's what this tastes like, except that it's sweet. Mm-hmm. I would say about as sweet as maple syrup or honey. It's not as viscous as honey. It has more of a texture of maple syrup, but it's absolutely delicious, especially on sourdough waffles, which have just a little bit of a tanginess to it. Alrighty, my gut is officially busted. Erin, thank you so much for sending such a generous package of Louisiana treats. It was wonderful to see your little neck of the woods. I can't wait to taste the crawfish. I can't wait to taste the alligator. I'm so curious to see what the texture is going to be like on that. So tune in to check out those videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Subscribe, like this video, and I shall see you in the next one. Toulou, take care. Bye! What else am I gonna talk about here, huh?